Hey there folks, Rini and T here, and welcome to Gods of the Twilight. Thank you, Uber Strategist PR for the code for the game. So, for those who have been paying attention, I did already do the demo, however, I'm only starting it from the beginning. I did demo, no commentary, and this is the full release. So like I have that, I have a save here. But it's not the end of the demo, and I don't want to try to remember where it was. So we are just going to go ahead and hit start new game and we can choose which character we wish to start with. Now we'll, we'll, it will bounce back between both of them, but it'll just be like our first character could be our hero from the start. So we're going to go with Althea and it's intended for 17 plus audience Contains foul language, sexual things, descriptive violence, other mature topics not for the faint of heart. Hurts the flag and say and do some nasty things that don't reflect the devs' of views or my views. For the record. For the fiction. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, welcome to Gods of the Twilight. Since you're starting a new game, do you want the tutorial? Uh. Also, it has voice acting, so I won't be reading every line, but there are some non voiced lines. I want to say... Ugh, I don't know what the other one is. Obviously, this is already... I'm going to change it to... Oh, skip is just going to be like that. Alright, well... Let's go ahead and just say I'm ready to play. And an age of the axe, an age of the sword, an age of storms, an age of wolves. Shields will be cloven before the world sinks in the sea. There will be no man left who is true to another. Poetic Edda Vuspa Stonsa. I'm sorry, I this is like Nordic, Icelandic stuff, and I'm gonna absolutely butcher pronunciations. So we're also gonna figure out what the auto button is. The sounds of battle surround me. I look around at the chaos. There's something I'm supposed to do. But how? Where? Where are the others? They were supposed to help me. No. They're turning and fighting him. This isn't how this is supposed to go. Stop! He isn't our enemy. He needs to do this, or else... The voice is both familiar and unfamiliar, yet it comes from within me. I feel its urgency as my own. I rush forward. He's attacking them now in return. Viciously, but outnumbered. The outcome is now all but certain. Suddenly I'm on the ground, warm blood pouring down my face. Is it mine? What happened? My vision fades as a figure stands over me and a blade jabs down from above. Traitor. Who said that? A swell of music plays. My alarm went in stream. My... Okay, a swell of music pulls me- it just goes right into it, wow. Pulls me back to the physical world. My alarm. Put an intense dream. My heart's still pounding as if I've been fighting for my life. Okay, so I can do that to just quickly get up there. I blink, bringing my eyes into focus and then mentally summon my heads up display. I shut off the alarm and quickly flick through my notifications. Well, maybe you can snooze for 10 minutes. I lie gazing at the ceiling, the morning sun streaking across from the window. What are these dreams? I can't always remember them, but it feels like this wasn't the first time. Um, Just add an entry to my dream journal. I pull the file up and watch my words appear as I mentally dictate them to my phone. Don't remember too much, but there was a fight of some kind. Raw emotions between me and someone else, and a shock of pain. There's a knock at the door. Miss Thea, are you getting ready? It's Johannes, the assistant my parents hired after we moved to New Reykjavik. He, his impeccable politeness makes pings like these easier to swallow, but his knock was still jarring with how afraid I feel. We've been in the city less than a year and I'm still not used to having an assistant so close to my own age. Everywhere else we've lived, the household staff were all my parents' generation. They felt more like in authority, I was the kid. Whereas Johannes is doing this for extra funds while well, he studies at university. Another year, we might end up taking the same classes. 
Um, oh, nice. I enjoy his company. He's always been kind to me, very professional, but I've enjoyed learning what I can about him as he gradually shares things here and there. It's like solving a, pro a puzzle. Well, my parents occupy a lot of time. Staff have always been like extra family members to me. Johannes is a bit new for that, but in the months since we moved, he's still the person I've talked to the most. I tell him... All right, I'll be down at the car. He appreciates my promptness, so we'll get a little friendship, little blips and blurbs as we choose our things. You know, usual kind of the end stuff with friendships and whatever that is. I believe it's fairly linear, but with some slight choice adjustments for choices you make. I need to get moving. My head is still spinning a little from that dream, but I'll be late for class if I take much longer. Footsteps trail from my door. I might have a minute or two to continue lying here, but I really need to get up, so eventually I roll out of bed. I get dressed. Uh, we're gonna take our time. Take over my outfit, hair, and face in the mirror as I get ready, making sure there's no remains inside a bed head or how tired I still feel. Excuse me. Once I'm ready to go, I add brec a breakfast bar to my bag to save time and head down to the garage. Not many people own their own car, so having one at my disposal is quite a luxury. Not to mention having a human driver? Most people just hail rides everywhere or take the rails. All automated unless you pay extra for the human touch. I'm just happy that I can relax on the ride over. I'm normally sleep deprived anyway, carving out time for the things I want to learn about after my official studies are done. Not to mention the friendships that survived all of our moves are online, and none of them in this time zone. Johannes smiles and nods to me, opening a door for me before going around to the driver's side. That was a bit longer than expected, though you are looking quite sharp. He doesn't normally comment on my appearance, so the compliment catches me off guard. Is he just making conversation, or does the part of him behind that polished professional exterior actually find it attractive? Or is he judging me for taking too long and covering it with a compliment? It's so hard to tell with him. Whatever, it's nothing to get worked up about. Yeah, just because I'm ready for a nap on the inside doesn't mean I can't make my outside ready to take on the world. Of course. We speed off into the city. He knows his place in his traffic fluently, and it shows. He weaves through intuitively in ways that make might have seemed dangerous if I hadn't already learned to trust his instincts. This guy's already darkening back to his typical dull gray. You know if this morning was a bit brighter than usual, it's still been years since I saw a patch of blue sky? Johannes plays a podcast about recent He might not share much about himself and his professionalism, but I've learned that he prefers to spend his spare brain cycles learning things rather than listening to music. It took a while to convince him that I really had no preference regarding what we listened to, but I'm glad I did. I always end up hearing something interesting during our drives. I mean, sure, South America has plenty of underground seasonal storm shelters, but they're only built to house people for a few weeks at a time. That'll be up to their governments to figure out. But in the long term, we just need more ocean platforms if we're going to be climate robust. Ocean platforms like the one we're on. New Reykjavik is a synthetic island, floating atop the rising sea, built as a refuge for the inhabitants of the old capital, now submerged under the Atlantic. Unlike a real island, it can move like a large, slow ship, but that's enough to avoid the worst hurricanes and other storms so long as the forecasts are accurate enough. It's strange to imagine how people used to live on this planet with nothing. No special tech to make this place inhabitable for them. Just sit out in nature and somehow be okay? Weird, right? I mean, I know it must have been like that, but it's hard to imagine actually living that way. I guess I could try camping on the mainland, but I'd kind of rather just enjoy the comforts of the city. I prefer adventures of the mind. Finally, we arrive at, this, at school. Thank you, Hannes, for his company. Quiet though he was for most of the ride. He'll stay out running the house's errands for a while, and meanwhile, I'll be here. As busy as school makes me, I can't help but feel like my time is being wasted. Happy to learn, but I guess their priorities aren't the same as mine. The things I most want to learn aren't the things we're covering right now, or the things required for matriculation exams. So I give them what they want, then lose sleep doing what I want. 
If we'd stayed in another country, I might be at a university by now with more freedom to choose my own studies. But of course at the gymnasia, Iceland's equivalent of high schools, to go to age 19, so here I am. I head to one class after another in rooms with round clusters of displays where students sit to do the day's exercises while instructors circulate and help whoever's struggling. In literature, it's independent writing today. In computer science, it's, science, it's a group exercise. In bio, we have some wet lab stuff to do, so it's lab benches instead of electronic displays. We rarely do stuff like that, and the change of pace is nice. We get our reading assignments to prepare for the next session, and shuffle ourselves along to the next class. Like classes are well done, but it's more like a game of ticking all the boxes for the requirements rather than going after knowledge because there's something in particular we want to learn. Because we want to do something with that knowledge. At lunch, I sit with a few other students I've been getting to know. I have to admit, when we moved here, uh, moved here several months ago, small typo, I didn't make much effort to meet people. I just said goodbye to yet another group of friends who may or may not keep in touch online, and well, I would just... Didn't have it in me to go through that again so soon, so I just focused on my coursework. But these guys saw me sitting alone and said hi. They included me. And it's been nice having people around. Even if I still catch myself staying at arm's length from them, wrapped up in my own thoughts, or just hesitating to get attached. Oh, hey, Thea. So, the posh princess deigns to honor us with her presence. Yes. Be grateful, peasant. Come on, you don't have to give her such a hard time. Hey, I'm like barely fucking with her. And look at her, she's perfectly fine. Oh, fucking with people is how he shows affection. You don't need to explain me, Miranta. Anyway, I'm ready for a nap. I think I'll just stay here the rest of the day, okay? Okay. He's resting his head on his forearms, which are folded in front of him on the table. What are you up late? Nah. I just hate my life. So the usual. Yep. Life isn't that bad. Except, yeah, it is. There's a low key playful irony beneath his deadpan response. The humor around here is almost always dark, if not full on nihilistic, where my, the hopelessness of humanity is the punchline. But that's pretty normal in my experience. I mean, if someone acted genuinely cheerful, they'd just come across as fake or ignorant and everyone would shit on them for it. Why would anyone be genuinely cheerful, right? Now, hear me out. Have you ever tried not getting up in the morning? Or ever? Oh, uh, fuck off. That's going a bit far, Peter. Is it, though? To be honest, it bothers me a bit as well. Joking about depression and suicide as if such things are just a matter of course. But maybe joking about it helps, at least more so than pretending these things don't happen? I consider asking what they think about all that, but I hesitate. I don't know them that well yet. Never forbid I say anything that truly heartfelt in front of my peers. For now, I just keep up my end of the banter until everyone's done with lunch and we head out to our remaining classes. After class, when I'm allowed to turn my phone back on, I see a blip to one side of my vision. Notification on my heads of display, a message from Johannes. I get the mental command to open the message and Johannes appears on my head. To the, my eyes, he looks like a hologram, even though I'm the only one who can see the display. I'm afraid your parents have asked me for my health with some urgent last minute business, so it'll be an hour or so before I'm able to pick you up. Message is just a recording, so I can't respond directly, but still. What business? I guess he didn't feel at liberty to share? Sure, my parents were always busy, but it never seemed like anything secret, just their work. I'll let you know when I'm free if I don't hear from you otherwise. Stay safe. That he would worry about my safety isn't terribly surprising. The city is dangerous to walk around by yourself. The glowing signs in the hallway often warn about gang recruitment, and we've seen, all seen the clips people post of the toughest gangs in the city. With law enforcement stretched thin, sometimes the best people can do is report what happens and hope for justice later. Of course, they also know that the spectacle will draw views. Cybernetics, exotic weapons, that flip past firearms restrictions. I know most criminals can afford those things, but even a mugger with a knife is serious trouble, and there are plenty of those. I keep seeing video comments saying someday some gang is going to get their hands on exoskeleton armor, still from some foreign black ops unit, and then it'll be game over. They'll rule the 
rule the city. I don't know if I believe it. Maybe the biggest mafia in the... Excuse me, maybe the biggest mafia in the world could do it, but in a tiny country like this? Either way, if I go anywhere, it'll be best not to go alone. Unless I just hail a ride straight home. Um... Let's just hang out at the library. I went a different route in the demo, if you... I'll try and remember that. I went out with the friends, but I'm gonna see what happens if I just hang out in the library. Head into the library, which does have some books, but mainly just quiet study areas. Individual tables as well as collaborative ones, with and without clusters of displays for students to use. It's easier to look things up electronically anyway. There are a couple others here, but not many. Anyone else staying this late is probably busy with a club or a sport. Sit one of the tables and look at my reading assignments. Anyone else, it might look like I'm just staring off into space when I'm scrolling through the windows up here on my HUD in response to my mental commands. Large ethereal screens float around me, invisible to everyone but myself. Some people prefer physical screens. They can be easier on the eyes, I guess, and faster to collaborate in person without the extra steps of HUD screen sharing. But a lot of times, it's easier to just do what I'm doing now. Might as well get started, only I can't seem to focus. I was so distracted by a newsfeed I'd opened in the sidebar. Some headline about crops dying on the mainland since spring conditions weren't meant for them to sprout again this year. Not hard to imagine. It's already fall and it was uncomfortably chilly all summer, even with the outdoor climate controls within the city. It's strange, the ice caps melt and the seas rise, but the weather is so unpredictable that we never really experienced summer either. Of course, between the thick clouds constantly covering the sky and the artificial lighting of the city, day and night don't seem to make much difference either. It's like an eternal twilight. I read on now about the need for more and more greenhouses to keep the population fed. At least New Reykjavik is already in good shape in that regard. Plenty of hydroponics on the lower decks of the city. It's part of the reason my family moved here rather than Europe. It's safer than trying to put down roots into freezing or flooding soil. I guess they couldn't have put greenhouses on the top deck and tried to use natural light, but since the light and temperature aren't that great up here anyway, citizens probably prefer to live where they can see the citizens probably prefer to live where they can see the sky. I read a bit more. Apparently this is the third year it's been like this for virtually all crops. Three years of unending winter. Haven't I heard that somewhere before? Now I find myself actually interested in something. Are looking it up? Where have I heard something about three years of winter? Scrolling through results, I pause. There. The prophecy of, Rekt of Ragnarok. Three years without summer, under a useless sun, were supposed to be a sign of Norse, Norse mythology's apocalypse. I remember reading through all this during my late nights of personal studies. At this point, I've read volumes on so many different traditions the world over, from those left in the dust of history to those still practiced, large and small. I don't draw a line between mythologies and religions because, what's the saying? All stories are true in the places where they're told. Truth is the human experience behind it and that always exists, what a performance might truly have taken. There's something I love about them all and I love finding connections between them more than anything. I keep reading my mood lifting. I don't forget to check my messages and see if there's anything from Johannes. I don't always know to blip when I'm focused. Before the years of unending winter, there are predicted to be three years of war all across the world. Pause and think back. This, did this one line up too? This is silly. It's easy to see connections if you're expecting them to be there, even if they really aren't. War and the weather. All of these things are normal. It's always sort of been like this. But the old stories catch my interest and I find myself picking through them again. Seems like every time I study these things, there's something new I take from it. Like looking at it with new eyes. But I guess I sort of am. After living through another year and experiencing new things, I'm never quite the same as I was before. As I read, I notice out the corner of my eye some sort of movement outside the far window. When I look, there's an odd, dark shape near the bottom of the glass on the outside. Normally something like that wouldn't catch my attention, but there's an eerie, almost familiar feeling that I'm getting from it. I have no idea why. Uh... What? I get up and head to the window, peering out left and right to see whether whatever I notice is still there. Sure enough, gripping the edge of the other window sill below is what looks to be dark gloved human hand. As I watch the person's other arm extends up to a, up to press a fist against the glass, there's an odd 
buzzing sound? Ah! What the hell? I quickly back away, putting a chest high shelf between me and the window. The last shatters. A handful of other students in the room and the librarian thought shouts of surprise and scramble away toward the door. A person wearing some sort of high tech gear, face completely covered by a mask, climbs up through the window. Some sort of well supplied gang? What here? Forget it, I'm already sprinting away. No time to think about anything else. I need to get out of this person's sight. I'm on the wrong side of the room to get to the exit, so I try to disappear around the corner, quietly keeping an eye on the dark figure so I can't be blindsided. Security alarms are already going off, and guards are rushing into the room. They know how to deal with punks or Asia in trouble, but high end gear like that? The fire tasers at the unknown person, but the crackling electricity does nothing against that armor. In an instant, a brittle slice sends one guard to the ground, choking on blood. The other retreats, calling for backup. My eyes widen at this real sight, feeling like I might sink back and collapse. The armored stranger doesn't chase the running guard and turns as if looking for something. I stay as still and quiet as I can. Meanwhile, I can't help but feel my attention drawn to the wooden guard on the wounded guard on the floor. I use my head to zoom in a little, I can see the subtle move in the breathing, but it's irregular. The eerie feeling of familiarity is back. It's telling me there's something important about focusing on this guard. If I might be able to help somehow? That's when the dark figure turns from its search and starts heading back toward the guard on the floor. Is it about to finish them off? Uh. Try to figure out this intuition. I follow the pain motion of breathing as it flows shallower on the verge of fading out entirely. The guard is bleeding out, but I nonetheless find myself focusing with single-minded intensity as if pulling my breath to feed into theirs. I wonder for a moment how this could possibly help, and yet my attention remains fixed like a magnet. In my near meditative state of tunnel vision, it's almost as if I can feel something flowing through me in the direction of the guard. Probably just a figment of my imagination, but even as I wonder about that, I notice the guard's breath becoming more steady and more obvious. And no longer seems to be fading. Am I seeing this correctly? I was actually- it wasn't actually me, was it? And that mass figure has turned his attention in my direction. Did it notice? Robin puts its approach and without another thought, I break into a sprint. I weave around corners, tr trying to always keep out of my pursuer's line of sight until I can make it my way to the exit. Once I'm through the through he door, through the door, I plunge myself into the flow of other people rushing out of the building. I force myself to just keep sprinting away out the door and down the street. I've already hit the emergency call button on my HUD, so the police have my location, but who knows how long it'll take for them to get here. They even have people to spare for this. How far do I need to run before I'm safe enough to call a taxi? Farther than this. Around the corner in an attempt to break line of sight with the school, I can't help but glance behind me, worried I might have been followed. My heart freezes in my chest. The black clad attacker has abandoned the school entirely and is sprinting down the sidewalk in my direction, weapon poised to strike. Why? I can see a gang wanting my family's money, but my death? I turn my attention to the path ahead, pushing through the panic buzzing in my brain to focus on the next step and the next. There has to be some way I could lose this person. Up ahead, I see a dark van screech to a halt and the side door opens up to reveal a woman in uniform. Police officer who's actually wielding firearms? Must be special forces. Get in! Quickly! Jumping to a strange van might not sound terribly safe, but at this point? To get to the van, I sprint with the last burst of my energy I can muster. Meanwhile, she leans out, bracing herself against the door and aiming past me with a strange sort of pistol I haven't seen before. When it fires, a concussive wave radiates out from it, throwing the black-clad individual back through the air. No bullets. Interesting, non-lethal option. I'm no expert, but I've never seen weapons like that outside science fiction. Is this normal for special forces now? As Hacker lands on their feet a few meters back and keeps approaching, but the blast brought, bought enough time for me to climb inside. The door closes and we speed off. I know traffic giving way fluidly the last past, like a sea parting for our convenience. Guess she really must be special forces if the city's traffic AI is treating this vehicle like with that kind of priority. With the chase over, I finally noticed just how much I'm shaking. My hands, my light arms, even my legs. 
Hold my heels up onto the seat and hug my knees tightly against my chest. But I just keep shaking. I am safe now. I, I I'm safe now, right? And yet... With sudden renewed panic, I activate my head and attempt to call my parents, both at the same time. I just want to hear that they're alive. I won't go through. I try again and again. I, I, I have no reception. Is it the van? Are they blocking me? Some kind of security feature so I'm not tracked? I try to form the words to ask about it, but I realize I just can't. Speech has left me for the moment. I've never seen anything like this before. Nearly being murdered, seeing someone else cut down. But for now, I simply hold myself and let my body tremble until it's exhausted. Several minutes pass and fatigue finally brings with it a strange sense of calm. My head feels clearer now. I'm grateful, but there's something odd about it. This whole rush of emotion and then the way it seems to pass. Feels familiar. There's no way I could have done anything like this before, right? Look around at the woman and the other two officers inside the van. I have so many questions. I breathe and focus on farming at least a few words so I can start asking. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Kormani, New Reykjavik Police, Special Operations Unit. What is going on? There's a lot to explain, and we have questions too. Better if we get back to base. Our director has more answers than I do anyway. Where are we going? It's safer if I don't give you the exact location, but to our base. Just wait until we get where we're going. We continue to drive. The other officers look like they were ready for a fight, but they don't say much as we continue. They just gaze out the front windshield or review whatever's displaying on their heads, judging from their, the way their out of focus eyes flip back and forth as if reading something floating in the air in front of them. Eventually, we get to a guarded gate in front of a ramp that leads down to the city ship's lower decks. Your guard scans the van and confirms the identities of the officers in it. The gate opens and we drive down. I thought this might be a parking area for the building above, but I don't see anything like that. We just keep going for down and at some point we level out and keep driving forward. Based outside the van is completely dark at this point. The AI driving the vehicle doesn't need light to see, after all. Take a few turns as we go and start to wonder just how much is down here. How many decks were there again? Eventually we come to a stop facing a door in the wall of the tunnel. And finally see the walls and the otherwise lightless passage thanks to the lamps over the doors. This way. We can talk in the briefing room inside. What is this place? Sorry. The director will have to decide what to share. Wanna go home? It furrows her brows, looking apologetic. I'm afraid we can't just take you home. These assassins would only find you again. What about my parents? They should at least know I'm okay. She glances to the side, her eyes still trouble. We'll talk more inside. Am I gonna die here? <laughs> I certainly hope not. Face grows more serious as she realizes how nervous I must be. <clears throat> no, no. <laughs> Nothing like that. Um... Think of this more like witness protection. We aren't here to threaten you. Okay, head inside. We step into a lobby just inside the door, and I see the van drive off by itself as soon as we're all out of it. I really wonder how I'm going to get out of here if something goes wrong, or if it turns out I can't trust these people. Just run off through these dark tunnels? I guess I have to hope I can trust them. Dun dun dun! That was chapter one, Althea. I guess we're gonna have to... Um... I was young once. I walked alone. I became lost on my way. I felt like I was rich when I met another traveler. People's joys in the... Joys in the other people. Poetic Edda. Havamal Stanza 47. Farkas chapter one. Or par chapter zero, Farkas part one. <sighs> this pain... It's like I've been aching for eons, as long as I can remember. However, we will dive into Farkas Part 1 and next time. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you will enjoy this. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to have to hydrate a lot because reading. <laughs> Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. If you really enjoy it, consider supporting the channel. All support really helps to keep being content like this 
That was quick save. Uh, where's the regular save? Where's the regular save? Uh, if you really enjoy it, consider supporting the channel. All support greatly helps to keep being content like this and more. Find links for that in the description below, along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching, and thank you again, Over Strategist PR, for the code for the game. Until next time, this is Rinny MT signing out. Bye!